Good day, great tens. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. In this lesson, we're going to carry on talking about waves, and we've noticed that we've been doing transverse waves. Okay, oh, I don't know why it says that. Okay, so we've been doing transverse waves, and we got as far as talking about the different types of waves which we get with transverse waves, including the water waves. And remember, we spoke about the fact that a wave will come along, and this year would be one wavelength one wavelength and you designate it with a lambda which is a greek letter for l um i don't know why they'd have the l for lambda but oh it's for length wavelength okay and then this would be your crest and this would be your trough and then um, basically what I spoke to you about was the definition of a period. And remember I said to you that if you have someone who is sitting on a rock at the ocean and they um, um, just, can you hold on for a second? My internet seems to be a bit slow. Just Okay, hopefully that will um, kind of sort things out. Uh, let me just see. Okay, so hopefully that will sort it out and it will start coming right. I don't know. I have no idea. So <laughs> as far as I know, I'm the only person on this internet that line. Anyway, so let's carry on. The definition of period. The period is time taken for two successive crests or troughs to pass a point. So remember I said to you that if, for example, you had a person and they were sitting out on a rock and the wave was passing them, and the deal was that if we measure the time it takes for two successive crests to pass a specific point. So last time they had a wave crashing over them, let's pretend that this time they are standing on a dock in a bay and you have the waves, okay? And let's say, for example, there is, I don't know, let's put a duck again on this crest and a duck again on this crest. The time it takes for the difference in time it takes for those two ducks to pass this person at the end of the dock would be the period. The period is the time it takes for two successive crests or troughs to pass a fixed point. The frequency is how many successive crests pass a given point in one second. So that would be him or me or whoever standing on the stock and counting the number of crests or ducks that pass us in one second. And remember I told you that therefore frequency is one over period. Frequency is measured in hertz after Mr. Hertz and it's HZ. T is the period and it's measured in S in seconds, it's measured in seconds, and the symbol is S. And remember, I said to you, very lame joke that the teachers always say. They said there's no sex in science, okay? But that's a good way for you to remember. It. So if you're not sure whether you should be writing S or something else, rather write out the whole word seconds, okay? So frequency is equal to one over period, and period therefore is obviously equal to one over frequency. Okay, so let's do an example. It says, if the time between two consecutive waves is 0.25 seconds, what is the frequency of the wave? Okay, well, we know that frequency equals 1 over period. Now, grade 10, this formula is on your formula sheet. It is, okay? So, what you need to do is you need to check it. And what I tell all my students, including my grade 12s, is please, please, please keep your formula sheets next to you while you are learning science, when you're practicing science. Your, your tools when you are busy doing science. So just as much as your pen and your pencil and your ruler and the paper are tools for doing your work, your calculator and your um Period, I mean, your periodic table if you're doing chemistry and your data sheet, they are all, or, or formula sheet, they are all the tools that you need to do science properly. So you should always have your data sheets and your formula sheets next to you and your periodic table if you're doing chemistry, etc. Why grade 10s? Because it's 
get if you get used to using the formula sheet over a period of time, then what happens is you get really, really good at it. It's the same as reading a watch, okay? Initially, you might look at the watch, especially if it's an analog watch, you know, not digital, and you look at it and you might go, oh, what is that? Is it 10 past two? Is it five past three? What is it? You know, when you're young and you're learning how to read a watch. Um, however, however, after a while, you'll find that looking at a clock and you can immediately, instantaneously be able to tell the time. Why? Because it's with practice. So the more you practice looking at your data sheet, looking at your formula sheet, using it together with your calculator, etc., you will actually become better and better and better at using it. So then when you get into a test situation, it's much better for you. Okay, so let's carry on. It says, and obviously at the moment in grade 10, there's like four formula, okay? But you build up lots of formula as you go along. So you really need to get to grips with it from the start. Okay, it says, if the time between two consecutive waves is 0.25 seconds, what is the frequency? What have they given us? They've given us the time. They gave us the time. And they told us the period was 0.25 seconds and they want the frequency. So we can just substitute in that. So it's 1 divided by 0.25. And then we're going to get out our calculator. Dish, dish, dish. And, oh, sorry. Let me just close this down so it's out of my way. Keep forgetting to do it. And then I undo it later when I'm working because I like having the bar there. Okay, so it becomes, let's clear this. And it comes one over the naught point two five equals. So it's four. So the frequency is four. So the frequency equals four hertz. Remember your units. In grade tens, I'm going to stress this again. When I was tutoring a young lady from a very good school and she was doing so well whenever I was tutoring her, but and we were doing exam papers and everything, but every time she came back she got a B, she got 70 odd percent. And I was so frustrated because I didn't know what was going on and where it was going on. So eventually I got her to convince the teacher to allow her to bring her script home. And we went through it and we realized that what she'd been doing is she'd been leaving out all her units. And she defectively lost more than 10% in her exam paper just by leaving out her units and her directions when we spoke to vectors. And after that, she got A's and then she didn't need them anymore, which was awesome because the whole point about tutoring is that you're supposed to try and get your kitty to not, your student to not need you anymore. Right, now it says, what is the period of the wave of frequency 12 hertz? Period of the wave of frequency 12 hertz. So this is the other way around. This time we've got period is one over frequency. Just to confirm with you, we had frequencies one over period. So in other words, to get to this bit, we times both sides by the T. Those cancel. So now we have TF is equal to one. We divide both sides by F. And there we go. We've got period is one of a frequency, just to prove it to you. We've asked what is the period if the frequency is 12 hertz, so that's just going to be 1 divided by 12. And we get out our calculator and we go 1 divided by 12 equals, and of course it gives me that intelligent answer. So it becomes 0 0.083333. But remember grade 10, you always run off to two decimal places. So it's 0 0,08. So that is 0 0,08. And what is it? 0 0,08 hours, minutes, years, decades, seconds, seconds. Okay, remember your units. Right now, oh, just a second. Sorry, I've got a niggle in my throat. I really didn't think you wanted to hear me coughing you, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the speed of a transverse wave. Okay, let's talk about definitions. The definition is, and you need to learn this definition, you need to learn it, NB. The wave speed is a distance a wave travels per unit time. Okay, so speed, the wave speed, is a distance a wave travels per unit time. Okay, but we said, that the distance between two successive points in phase is one wavelength. Okay, so let's think about this. So if we take a wave and we keep going, okay, do you agree the distance from there to there, okay, 
is one wavelength, okay? In a time period, time of one period, the travel will, the wave will travel one wavelength in distance, okay? Because the definition of the period is the time it takes for one wavelength to pass, can okay, you remember? The definition of a period is the time it takes for one wavelength to pass, right? So we can say the velocity is the distance traveled over the time taken, which is the wavelength divided by the time taken, okay, or the period. But frequency is one of a period, so therefore we can say that velocity is equal to lambda frequency. So you can either have the velocity is equal to lambda over t, or more likely, that velocity equals lambda frequency. And this dude here is called the wave equation. So if they say use the wave equation to solve this problem, that's what they're talking about. And obviously remember that the wavelength is what? The wavelength is measured in meters because it's an SI unit, because it's distance. And your frequency is hertz. Let's talk about this. Frequency is one over period, which is going to be 1 over seconds, if you're talking units, which is going to be s to the negative 1. Okay, agreed. Therefore, if you look at that, this is meters times s to the negative 1, and that there is meters per second, which should be the unit for velocity. So that's right. So velocity equals lambda frequency, and that's the wave equation. So what have we got? We've got velocity equals lambda frequency. That's our wave equation. It says now an example, when a particular string is vibrated at a frequency of 10 hertz, okay, frequency of 10 hertz, a transient wave of wavelength 0.25 meters, determine the speed of the wave as it travels along the string. Okay, so what do we always do? We always write down what they give us. They've told us the frequency is 10 hertz, They've told us the wavelength is 0.25 meters and they want the speed. Okay, and please note they want the speed of the wave, not the velocity. So, what does that mean? It means we don't need direction. So, velocity equals lambda frequency. So, do we have the wavelength? Yes, we do. Do we have the frequency? Yes, we do. Are they in the correct units? That says 10 hertz, not 10 kilohertz, not 10 gigahertz, 10 megahertz. It's just 10 hertz. It's perfect. This is 0.25 meters, so that's perfect. So we can substitute it. So we've got lambda, which is 0.25 times by the frequency, which is 10, which equals 2.5. And then what is velocity measured in meters per second? And grade 10, please don't go meters per second to minus 1. That's not what this is saying. Per means divide. This is the written, if we had to write it out, we'd go meters times by 1 over s, which then becomes meters per second. If you say meters per second to the minus 1, what is that actually? If you write meters per second to the minus 1, that is actually meters times seconds. Okay, because when you do that, you have to take that up. And that's totally incorrect. So please don't go meters per second to the minus one. It is meters per second, full stop. Okay, please be careful about that. Okay, admittedly, you don't write down what you say, percent of the time. But you're gonna sound a lot more intelligent to your teacher and to your colleagues and to everybody else if you actually use the correct term. Right, now it says the distance between 13, 13 consecutive, and by the way, these are ex old exam paper questions. So now we're looking at old grade 10 exam paper questions on transverse waves to try and make sure that you guys can practice and do what we do, expecting, okay, experiencing. So it says, the distance between 13 consecutive wave crests in a ripple tank is 180 millimeters. The waves travel through the water at 0, 0.225 meters per second. Define the term wavelength of a wave in terms of in, in words, okay? And then calculate. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about wavelength. Wavelength is the distance between 
two consecutive points in phase. Okay, the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase. We'll stop. Now, they've said they want us to calculate the wavelength of the wave in meters. So first of all, it tells you the distance between 13 consecutive wave crests is 180 millimeters. Okay, so it's tempting to take this 180 and divide by 13, but let's just watch this. Okay, so let's start off and I'm just going to draw this like this to make it easy for me to keep, to keep a straight line. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, whoopsie, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I guess could just check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and 13. And guys, I know that they were supposed to all be equal size, but at the moment, all we're looking at is the number of wavelengths, okay? So we've got 13 consecutive wave crests, and that is in 180 millimeters. So that's wrong. First of all, that needs to be in meters, but let's just count how many wavelengths we have. Do you agree? Actually, it's from here, hey? It's from there to there is 180 millimeters. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've got twelve wavelengths. Okay, we do not have 13 wavelengths, so you've got to be careful about that. So we've got 12 wavelengths in 180 millimeters and instead of 180 millimeters what can we do we can make it into meters because that's what we need to do so we need to divide that by a thousand so it is 12 wavelengths in 0.18 meters right so therefore what do we need to do we need to now say well if 12 wavelengths is 0.18 meters long, then how much is one wavelength? Well, it's going to be 0 0.18 divided by 12 equals 0.015. Okay, so that equals 0.015 meters. So the wavelength of the wave is 0.015 meters. Okay, if 12 of them is 0.18, then obviously if we divide that by 12, we get 0.015, and that is the wavelength, the length of one wave. Now we want the frequency, but we have the speed. Okay, so if we think about this, we've got the wavelength, it's 0.015, we've got the speed it is 0, 0.225. We want the frequency. So do you agree we can use the wave equation? We can go V is equal to lambda F, which equals the well, lambda is 0, 0, 0.015 times by the frequency, which we don't know. And that is equal to the speed. And the speed is 0, 0,225. Now grade 11s, I mean grade 10s, I have done something that I really don't want you guys to ever do, and that is to write the whole thing out like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase some of this writing to make sure it's nice and neat so that you guys can actually understand how you should write this. Because I find a lot of times the main issues the grade 10s have is on how to write this out so that you can definitely get all the marks. So V is equal to lambda F, right? V, we know, is 0.225. The wavelength is 0.015, and that's frequency. We want frequency alone. So you divide both sides by 0.015. 0.015, that cancels, and then all you do is use your calculator. So what is wrong with this? Effectively, strictly speaking, you cannot have numerous equal signs in an equation, okay? So 
they're doing it this way, you're showing that you know exactly what's happening in the equation. So let's do this. It's 0, 225 divided by 0, 0, 0.15. Okay, equals, and it's 15. So the frequency is 15 what? 15 hertz. 15 hertz. Okay, good. Moving on. Okay, so now another exam-based question that we're going to go through. Uh, right. It says the graph below shows the displacement of a leaf on a dam at intervals of 0.3 seconds after disturbance have moved through the water at 12 meters per second. So basically, let's pretend that there'd been, I don't know, something that had gone through the dam or the lake or the dam at 12 meters per second. It's quite fast. So maybe a boat through the dam. Okay, and now there's a little leaf, and the leaf is traveling this way. It's traveling up and down, okay, and it's traveling from left to right, okay, and it's saying that this is a disturbance of the leaf. This is what we're seeing the leaf do. It's going to so the leaf is going to go up and down and up and down all the time while traveling, right. Now it says, at position S, yes. is the leaf moving to upwards or downwards? Well, it is moving upwards. How do we know this? Because the direction of the movement, displacement, is in that direction, right? From right, left to right, because this is the zero time. So displacement is obviously going to be along to, from left to right. So in that case, the leaf is going to go down here, and then it's going to go up, yeah, so it is traveling upwards at that point in time, and then it's going to travel downwards, etc., etc. So the answer is upwards. Then it says consider points, let's just change color now, consider points P, hmm, I have no idea where P is, okay, Q, R, and S. And it says, identify two points which are in phase. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing that P is supposed to be up here. Okay, because there's only one way that P, there can be two points in phase. Well, although, okay, let's do it this way. Since they haven't given us P, why don't we place P where we think the two points would be in phase with respect to different things, okay? So, okay, so let's have a look. If it was supposed to be in phase with Q, then it would be P over there, okay? Because these two points are both crests. If it was supposed to be in phase with R, then it would have to be over here, okay? And if it was supposed to be in phase with S, it would have to be over, let's do a different color. It would have to be over yeah about over here okay so it totally depends since they didn't give us p we can't actually tell where they were identifying so now we know p and q are now in phase s and the purple dot are in phase and r and the blue dot are in phase blue circle now it says calculate the frequency of the wave okay do we agree that frequency is one over period we also know that velocity is equal to lambda frequency. And what is frequency? Frequency is the number of waves that pass a point in one second. The number of waves that pass a point in one second. Okay, so it says that the graph below shows the intervals of a dam as intervals of 0 0.3 seconds, which we said, after the after disturbance have moved through the water at 12 meters per second. Okay, um, so do you agree that we've also know the frequency is how many waves will pass through in one second? So if this is 0 0.9 and this is 1.2, do you agree that halfway through here should be, wait a minute, this is 0 0.9, that's 1.2. I'm just going to see something, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. Okay, that's 1.2, that's 1.2, so that would be, 1 would be over here somewhere, and 1.1 would be over here, so that doesn't really help us, 
So it's going to be 1, 1, 0.6. Okay. Um, do you agree that one wavelength equals 0.6 seconds? In other words, the period of one wavelength is 0.6 seconds. To get from here, we through to here is 0.6 seconds. So those are two points in phase. That's why it takes 0.6 seconds, okay? We also know that frequency is equal to one over period, right? Which is going to be one over 0, 0,6 is going to give me my frequency. So if I do that, do you agree I can say one divided by 0 0.6 equals, and then I press the AC button, 1.67. So the frequency is 1,67 hertz. There you go. So now we know the frequency is 1,67 hertz. Now they want the wavelengths, but we know V is equal to lambda frequency. Do you agree? We've got the V. They told us it's 12. We've got the frequency, it's 1,67, so we can easily find the wavelength. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got 12 is equal to lambda times by 1,67 divided by 1,67 divided by 1,67. Cancel, cancel, and then let's use our calculators. So we're going to go 12 divided by 1.67 equals 7,19. Okay, remember that we run off to two decimal places always unless they tell you otherwise. So therefore we look at the third number and the third number is 5 and 5 and bigger, what happens? We round up. So it's 7.19. So therefore the wavelength is 7,19 what? Meters. Let me just check that. 7,19, yeah, I'm right. So the wavelength is 7,19 meters. 7,19, okay. Now it says, what is meant by the term amplitude of the wave? Now listen, the cool thing about this type of phrase is when they say what is meant by the term of the amplitude, it doesn't mean that you have to give the answer in a perfect definition. You can actually write this as you understand it. If they say define the amplitude of a wave, then you have to actually use the proper words. But if they say what is meant by the term, you can still use the official definition or you can explain it in your own words. And what it is, it's a maximum displacement of the wave, the maximum displacement of the wave from the line okay, of zero disturbance. Okay, in other words, if there was no ripple, do you agree the water would lie along this line here? Okay, that's where it would lie. Let me just put it in green. If there was no ripple, this is where the water would lie. Okay, so the distance, the amplitude is the maximum distance. I don't know what's right here. The maximum distance of the wave from the line of zero disturbance. Okay, now it says the amplitude of the wave is now doubled. What value in meters of the, what is the value in meters of the new amplitude? Okay, so do you see that this is millimeters? That is millimeters. Okay, and they want the value in meters. So since that is millimeters, do you agree that, first of all, let's let's go see what this says, okay? We want the amplitude to double, so it goes from 15 millimeters to 30 millimeters. So the answer is going to be 30 millimeters, but now we want it in meters. So what do we have to do? We divide it by a thousand, so it becomes 0, 0, 3 meters. No comma, no three meters. Okay, good. Now let's look at this question. Again, another exam question. Okay, let's do this one. It says the following sketch graph is for a wave and the height is drawn against time. So that's the height against time. The graph is not according to scale. Obviously, 
because um, this is 0 0.05 seconds, whereas this is 2 meters and 4 meters, or actually centimeters. Okay, it says, first of all, determine the amplitude of the wave. Now, do you see the amplitude of the wave? In this case, is 4 centimeters. Now, admittedly, you're supposed to generally give you the answer into what scale they want. But remember that this is science and you need SI units. So therefore, it is going to be equal to 0, 0, 4 meters. Let me just check, think about that. 10 centimeters. Yeah, that's right. 0 0.04 meters. Determine the period of the wave. Now, remember the period is the time it takes to complete one full wavelength so that's going to be naught comma one second and i want you to understand something about this that when they say determine they don't they obviously well not necessarily but they don't necessarily mean calculate so determine could be just read it off or um read from the information you've been given or something like that it doesn't necessarily mean calculate when they say determine now they say calculate the frequency Calculate the frequency. Well, we know that frequency equals one over period. So that's going to be one divided by naught comma one, which is going to be ten hertz. Ten hertz. And then finally, you say calculate the wavelength of the speed of the wave is twenty meters per second. Well, we know that v is equal to lambda f, right? We know the velocity is twenty. We know, want the wavelength and the frequency is 10. So therefore, do you agree the wavelength is going to be 2 meters? There we go. Not too bad, hey? Right. Next question, it says, a wave completes four vibrations in 60 seconds and measures 20 centimeters from crest to trough. Okay, so let's just draw this, okay? It says it completes four vibrations in 16 seconds. So it goes one, two, three, four. Okay, there's four. I know they're not perfect, but there you go. It says and it measures 20 centimeters from crest to trough, that whole distance is 20 centimeters and it says it completes these four vibrations in 16 seconds it does the whole thing in 16 seconds now it says how long does it take five waves to pass a specific point well if four vibrations are done in 16 seconds if four vibrations equal 16 seconds then surely one vibration is going to equal four seconds i'm just for dividing both by four so if you want five waves what do we want we want to times that by five and it's going to give you 20 seconds so that's pretty easy 20 seconds now it says what is the amplitude of the wave well obviously if from here to here is 20 centimeters from the crest to the trough then the amplitude is going to be half that so it's going to be 10 centimeters, which is 0, 0, 1 meters. Okay. Whew. Okay. Now it says, what is the relationship between period and frequency? Now, grade 10, you have to be very careful because they're asking you what is the relationship between period and frequency. They are not asking you that T is to write down T is equal to one over frequency or frequency is equal to one over period. They're not asking you to write the formula. They're asking you really what the formula means. And what it is, is that the one goes up, the other one has to go down. And what is that called? That is called inversely, inversely proportional. Um, and grade 10, you have to be so careful. You cannot write indirectly. Indirectly means that there's no specific relationship. In other words, the period might be 10 and then the frequency is 1. And then the period might be 5 and this frequency might be 3,623,000. And then the period might be 1.7 and the frequency might be 1. That means that there's no no relationship we can't see any relationship whatsoever that's what we say when we say there's an indirect proportion if we inversely proportional it means as the one goes up the other one goes down 
inversely proportional, the one goes up, the other one goes down. And that's what's happening with period and frequency. Now it says, calculate the frequency of a wave with a period of two milliseconds. So they want us to work out the frequency. So we want frequency is one over period, but now they're saying two milliseconds. So you guys really need to know your tables and you need to know that it becomes milli, on oh, this way, milli, micro, nano, pico, okay. So milli is two times by 10 to the negative three. So that is a one over two times by 10 to the negative three. And then all you need to do is pop that in your calculator. So we go one divided by two, uh, where is it? Exponent negative three equals 500. So for the frequency is 500 hertz. So the answer to that is 500 hertz. Okay, now it says calculate the period of a wave with frequency of 20 hertz. So this time we want the period of the wave, but we've got a frequency of 20 hertz. So therefore we know T, the period is equal to one over frequency, which is one divided by 20, which is what? Well, if we get out a calculator, it's very easy to do. We can go one over 20 equals so the period is 0.05 seconds. Okay. Calculate the speed. Okay, I'm not doing one of these. You guys can practice these if you want. The only thing I want to point out to you is that that is 6 times by 10 to the 14 kilohertz. So to get that into the hertz, remember you're going to go 6 times by 10 to the 14 times by 10 to the 3 because it goes from kilohertz to hertz and you need to get it in the right formula format so then it becomes six times by 10 to the 17 hertz similarly over here the wavelength is 700 times by 700 nanometers and nano it's milli micro nano so that becomes three six nine okay so nano nine so it's going to be 700 times by 10 to the negative nine meters Okay, you guys need to be careful about that. Right, characteristics of longitudinal waves. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with longitudinal waves in the next lesson. Um, but remember that we effectively everything that we've learned in the transverse waves, we can actually apply almost everything. We can apply it to the longitudinal waves. But please note, and I would like to suggest that you guys do these questions, try them, and then if you can't do the last two questions, then please come and message me. You guys just need to join the grade 10 science class and message me and tell me you can't do it and I will happily go through it with you. Okay, so don't be scared about numbers that are big. Okay, and please go through this. Have a great day.